Welcome everybody to the Miller Lite NASCAR Cup Series event here for Darlington. As the uh, field is getting ready to go green, we are uh, your commentators here for tonight. Zachary Sterno is not a part of the field, but it is Emmett Freeman along with Rat Bastard and a brand new commentator to the booth, Steven Richardson. Um, and of course, these guys are going to be quite happy to be here i'm quite happy to be here at darlington dirt uh well richmond dirt actually i apologize where but we, um emmett where are we again we are at richmond dirt um dirt track here at richmond virginia quite some uh maybe an hour or so away from my home of west virginia um c packet is actually taking poll after a good run in the heat events. Jared Holmes takes second as uh, they get ready to go green. As the field goes off, here's the Hold My Beer race format. 0.75 mile dirt track here. 40 across for all stages and caution at the end of the stages with live pit stops. And the restarts are going to be leader's choice. C Packet is going to lead them off here in that number 37 Dodge. Let's see how this goes on lap one here on this dirt track. As the green flag flies, let's get this race right underway. Really good jump for that 37 going into turns one and two. Already about several car lengths right ahead to second place. Jared Holmes there as they go down the backstretch. stretch. 
It seems like the number two of Brian Leon is getting right across there. He is now up in the P2 spot as he now has to chase down C Packet in that Kmart car. Here is Nate Wines and now in number 38 entry. James Omaki right there near his back bumper. He has to try and keep that car clean all throughout the race. Oh, front front stretch. Uh, car is sideways. I think. Oh, big crash. Big, oh, big. my good terrible, God. Terrible. Oh, here. Oh, Looks like Farley's involved. The 89. Tw what oh, in the world? My goodness. I, I believe that's Gary Russell in the 22. Yeah. Car is demolished. First caution of the day, lap three. My, oh my God! Goodness. Probably going to be a red as well. Seth Peters. Yeah, that has to be red he's, he's been having a tough going lately here in the United uh, States. Um, winner at Bristol, and um, since then it's just been going downhill. Ouch! My God! W was just, just getting ready to point out they they look like they were getting a bit antsy. Yeah, but not I saw that to too. Yeah, I, like yeah, Rat. I saw them going down the front stretch. I was like, oh no, that this is could only end well, and um. Unfortunately, it didn't. Seems like hopefully it does not bring out a red, but violent accident going into one and two only on lap three. These guys seem way aggressive going into this, but what can I say? Playoff picture is getting dire, and while well, some people are starting to get desperate to try and get either their first win or a good points finish here, so hopefully we can see what truly happened during replays as Seth Peters rolls into pit road. And the field starts to try and line up. And it just... Oh, oh my god! Wow. What the wow. hell did Farley do? So, I'm th so, to me, it looks like Farley got clipped or turned into the infield grass. And then he just had no control coming back up. I, I, I need to see another angle because it just looks like that. This will be our shot right here. Oh, we got it. Oh, the old... Oh, we got it right down. Oh. The West oh. Virginians get together. And then... Slow motion, I think. And... Oh. He hit my the God. he hit like that little Damn. um apologies for my language there but oh just a part of the pit wall there that kind of jutted out I I didn't think he realized the car was going that low on board with Alan ah uh, ah uh, I think once Alan realized um once they were touching there was no going back oh that's and rough it, 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 this is a fast racetrack here in Richmond I think the, these cars are going. Way faster than they do when this thing's uh, this thing. And it's on dirt. You shouldn't be going this quick thing, on yeah. dirt. Uh, the, these cars have been booking it around here. Um, on board, Peter. Oh. An instant, as we see there. No this warning for Seth. Okay. No warning for Seth at all. My ah. lord. Tough break for the West Virginians there, Brandon Allen and Ethan Farley, but. I have no idea what either Ethan, I think Ethan got loose and just clipped into Brandon. They hooked into each other and just Ethan couldn't get the car back on track safely and just hit it the wall. But yeah. Evan did as good of a job as he could avoiding it there, but he really didn't yeah. have anywhere else to go. Yeah, I'd rather spin collecting a little damage than getting like terminal damage, but yeah. Just, we're thankful that everybody's okay in that crash because, oh, that was nasty. See, Packet's still your leader, as right now the bubble battle with Kylie Grider up at the top with the 62 Carter Jones right behind her. Now, remember, re the 21 is two points below, the 04 is nine points below. The person that wants to try and get above that bubble is the 21 or maybe even the 5 of J.D. Uh, Bregler. If he can get around Brandon Allen in that bubble, he may be able to get it done here. But right now, C Packet's still your leader at this time as the number 37 K March machine will uh, try and get this done as we are getting ready to go green here after this. Can't help but wonder how these drivers are going to be uh, acting with one another after something like that happened in about three laps into the race. Uh, we haven't even gotten that far to the point where drivers would be getting desperate. Um, are we going to see any drivers being conservative from this point forward, or is the chaos only going to continue? Yeah, this, just this is a new animal. Uh, this is a new sorry. animal for these MLNCS drivers. Oh, don't worry about that, Steven. Sorry, sorry about that. But yeah, hey, yeah, just try to avoid contact at a high-speed dirt track. How hard can it be? Like, just, just go slower. But yeah, it's really hard to avoid contact here. Well, it's definitely well, going, going to going be slower. Uh, is one thing. The, yeah. These drivers like to push it, though. They really do. As the pace car rolls into pit road, we go to the Geico restart zone. 
as C Packet will get them back under green here here at uh, Richmond Dirt. As the number two of Brian Leon goes there, Nate Wine goes to the inside of Jared Holmes. Now side by side action, the number two goes to the inside, wants to take the lead off of C Packet, the hottest rookie of the season. He wants to try and keep his lead, get a first career win within his belt as some of the dirt seems to be getting in the way of the visuals, but still keeps Brian Leon right there side by side. Yeah, that bottom that lane is very real. Ah, dang. Sorry again. Sorry, Rat. But uh, let hey, me no worries. There are here. a lot of us up here. Uh, but yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you'll notice over time in this race, the, the inside line is going to be definitely dominant. I mean, look at it right now. Look at this Brink 38 of Nate Wines going for the race lead now. We'll see if the top comes in at all as this race goes by. But for now, it's all inside Ooh. one lane. That was tight between uh, Wines and uh, Leon there, but Wines so far continues to have the preferred line on the inside. He's queer the two, and now here comes, I believe, that Zach Stern in the 83, Stern, followed yes. by Omaki. And now he, uh, oh, Stern is going to go up the inside. He's going to take the lead. Oh, that's tight. But Three they somehow wide. keep it through. Yeah, wow. Yeah, a track like this. My God. Who said, who said you can't make Richmond exciting anymore? Well, I can oh. say this. They're definitely sending it three wide. Jared Holmes, Brian Leon, and it looks like Nate Wines right there. Zach Stern trying to keep to the high side. C Packet looking low. He wants to get that lead back from James Omaki in that 18 Chevy. A lot of comers and goers up here. I'm noticing now drivers like Tyler King are making their way up here through the field. Jared Holmes trying to hold the zone. And yeah, uh, there's Stern. He's about to be... um swallowed up by the field here because he's way on that top line like at the middle line you could be okay but if you're on the way top yeah you're gonna get in live there right now three almost four wide was showing up there here comes roberta crown jr in that 21 rusty's car throwing it back to uh, my lightning mcqueen he's trying to get some lightning mcqueen speed c packet now gets to the inside will take the lead from omaki right now to the back bumper of jared holmes it appears to be the 28 he wants to try and keep that car and keep that lead uh he wants to get around the proclaimed king of the mlncs as there's a battle for the lead here for james omaki and c packet james omaki takes it off C packet starting to fall off on the high side. What a top three we have right now. Omaki, Holmes, Packet, you know, two very bright young stars that can wield and then one trying to hold his own. It's really amazing to see, you know? Now Omaki's got to watch it here. This 96 is really getting to his inside here. He might just do it right off a of four here going into turn one. A lot of the drivers taking a really low entry. Well, I can definitely say this. Jared Holmes, driver of the number 98 or number 96, I apologize, um, was actually a movie star uh, after the first season of the MLNCS, actually. Duel of Destinies with Zach Stern, actually. So these guys are uh, known for racing around in dirt-type oh, tracks three and three wide. wide for the lead. Here comes the number 28 Geico entry. Yeah, yeah there's making King, his way um, up here. Oh, darn it. Anyways, um, Tower King, um, this year has been up and down. Um, uh, especially with that certain incident after Rockingham. Um, but um, he's shown he can wheel it, uh, even though he's a rookie, and um, he's trying to fight for the lead here. I mean, he's all right. He's a professional. Tyler King is a dude who can really oh. keep his composure very well. It takes a lot um, to, to bring this guy down. I don't want to be uh, that one guy, but we got lap traffic. We got lap traffic coming up here with the 78 of uh, Peters, who's oh, yes, uh, just do uh, cruising. He's just cruising at this point. Oh, look at this kid. C Packet wants to try to go for this lead. He's got to watch it, though. That's real close. Good lord. I, Three know, wide been, for the lead. I apologize I for cutting out, you I've off. been really impressed. Been really impressed with this guy. Someone who's, you know, going here on the dirt. Brand new race car and is just leading all these laps. Hey, look at the bubble battle The fact there. that he literally came out of nowhere really throws in his talents. It, he can wheel it. Watch out for that 21 car, as you see currently as our cutoff. He's 11 points above. He's got to make sure he doesn't lose too many spots and doesn't wreck the race car, more importantly, as he's ahead of that uh, oh. race. He is no seven for top 10 in points. Really Seth. important. That is a driver without a victory. Well, I can Ooh. say this. Steve Packin wants to try and use Seth Peters as a pick to get away from the rest of the field. And the 28 car getting around. He wants to go keep to the inside. Here comes Zach, uh, somebody that we haven't really talked about today. Alan Mooch, who has shown up out of nowhere. Been trying to get a good uh, race start 
for Cyberstorm Racing. One of his uh, drivers, Ethan Farley, actually got involved in the accident on lap three earlier on to the day. He wants to try and avenge that wreck and try and hopefully get a uh, win here. But we're so early into the race that we cannot determine who can try and get this done uh, as easily as we can. Here's J.D. Bregler, who wants to try and uh, find his line here. Three wide there with Zach Stern, Jared Holmes, and Roberta Crown Jr. It's this like Alan so Lutra, somebody I'd like to talk to about. Would like to talk about. I mean, uh, this is someone who has really only recently been able to dip his feet in dirt racing. And he's been able to prosper. I mean, look at him. He's competing for the championship down in the Amsoil Dirt Late Model Series. And now he's here showing a bunch of speed. So he... It, it, this seems like his type of racing. It just isn't really discussed as much as drivers like Zach Stern. But he, he's really, in, Ooh, really exciting. On oh, this it was really close between Packet and uh, King there. They almost uh, hooked each other coming off the too. wall there, but they are able to keep it straight. Good Lord, Tyler King almost taking out C. Packet, the hottest rookie in Brink. Here comes James Omaki in that number 18 Omaki Inc. car. He wants to uh, get around for a second, try and chase the lead away from King. But right now, Leon and Mooch still right there in the catbird seat, waiting for one of them to make the mistake. You know, he's had a long history of dirt racing. A track like this is something that he's been waiting for for a very long time. That is really showing here today. A lot of speed that he showed in, uh, you know, over the course of the weekend and obviously here today. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's no surprise that he's up here running second, going to be going for the lead. Wouldn't surprise me whatsoever for him to be up there contending for the win. It's definitely you know, something he needs at this point in the season. You know, um, before, I, just as I said before, I got cut off by you, Rat. Um, um, as if, as we look at this racing that we're seeing right now, pretty much anyone could win this race if you're if you can just hook it on the bottom, just keep climbing up spots as you go. You're pretty much set for a good race. Well, it's going to be very difficult to see because we are right now 10 laps to go before stage end. Um, of course, Tyler King, still your leader. Your top five right now is Tyler King, James Omaki, Brian Leon, Alan Mooch, and the number 37, a C packet. These guys have seemed to uh, be in the most consistent drivers and either the most hungry or the most vicious how they drive the the hottest and uh the most skilled rookie in the field right now that number 37 car so i got my eyes set on him these guys are proving that the future is absolutely bright here in this series and for a lot of these teams um, how about brian leon like for most of the season he has been next to nowhere to contending and look at him right now I, he's about to go to third which he just did going by alan mooch but at that third place is now under foot by cpac but, but yeah really much needed performance by this two team his team isn't really the most competitive but they've been able to show up this season big jiggle from the 37 now that could have been that massive. 37 is not scared just only a second start and he's been he's treating it as like if it's his 10th season not at all. He has a pair on him, absolutely. That's somebody that Caden Bishop wants on that team for the future. I will say this without any doubts. I actually talked to C Pack a little earlier on before I had to come to the uh, race booth. And I, and I told him specifically, what is your plan here for Brink and what do you have to show? And he said he doesn't have to show anything. He just needs to let the car do the talking and let his skills do the rest. Um, and I told him specifically what was his motivation to join brink and he said he wanted to do it uh not only for donkey kong jr but also for something called the nabar i don't know what it is it's some wacky i guess like um like fake racing series i but he's shown that outside of the simulator he is a very skilled race car driver here's zach stern trying to get towards the inside of the uh <laughs> get to the inside of uh, Alan Mooch as James Omaki still trying to hunt down Tyler King. Yeah, this top two is absolutely broken away. Not sure how long that's going to last with this uh, dirt champion sitting back going for third right now with the 83 of Zach Stern. Um, trying to get by the 26, but yeah, a uh, lot of speed from, from King and Omaki so far in this race. I'd imagine Omaki in no time will definitely be up here side by side, if not just scooting right by this 28 car. Right now, the 28 and the 18 are hauling the mail here as we come to the last lap, stage one. 
So far, King leads into turn one, but can Omaki get him? But so far, it looks like um, it's set to be Tower King stage one. Well, I wouldn't put it beside you, but who knows what the lap cars, even then, it can still be a deciding factor. It looks like yeah, Omaki yeah. wants to check Omaki's out. out of time Tyler now. King goes to the front line. Stage winner, Tyler King. Yes, and the caution comes out. As they all come across start finish line. Some very interesting names there in the top 10 as we come to the stage end. Uh, Zach Stern seems lost a few spots there uh, toward the end of it. Not too sure what happened there. But uh, the field will come down pit road. Once again, live pit stops here. Remember that these guys will be seen by the masses to see how their pit strategy plays out. The best type of pit strategy is the one that works out the greatest. If Tyler King can get a good quick pit stop, he'll be able to keep that lead. But if James Omaki just gets two tires, he may be able to get it done here. Yeah, most certainly not your typical dirt track race. Not your typical MLNCS race. Really nothing that typical about this race whatsoever for these drivers. Visibility has become um, Absolute quite zero. thing yeah. for drivers to deal with. Yeah, it, it, it's non-existent, basically, as Seth Peters goes to get his lap back. And Tyra King will win the race off pit road. Omaki second, Mooch third, Roberto fourth, Leon fifth. And I think CPAC just is gonna barely stays inside the top ten, but we'll see about that after break. He yeah, lost a bit of a, a slow of... stop for that 37 car. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, though, with the speed that he's been showing so far. Yeah. I wouldn't put it beside him. I would have to say, uh, before we go into break... And we're back from commercial break. Tyler King, still your leader as the pace car rolls in. We get ready for the restart here. Here's your bubble battle. Right now, Roberto Crown Jr. with 15 points ahead of Brandon Allen, who is below the cut line with Brandon Allen. He'd have to get ahead of uh, Roberto Crown Jr. going into this as we are green flag racing. James Omaki now wanting to try and get it. He'll send it into one and two, but it will not be enough. Roberto Crown Jr. goes to the side-by-side -side with Alamooch. 
alongside, it appears the 19 is uh, getting around Brian Leon. Nate Wines now starting to get around that car. Both of these, a lot of drivers just now scrambling here on this uh, really fast racetrack, as you can see Caden uh, Bishop in that number 11 car. Yeah, and I believe uh, Fife in that 19 is a lap down. We had a few of those drivers up there uh, on the restart. But, uh, yeah, we've already had the top two break away here right off the start. So guys like Mooch and Crown uh, definitely got to get up there or else this race is going to get away from them. But still definitely early on here. It's so weird to see, like, a lot of big-name teams like uh, Campos, uh, Bishop, uh Ricci, they're just, like, competitors who you would see in the top 10 every week, they're just going, like, they're either making slow progress or they're just going nowhere at all right now. And I was going to point that out. A lot of big names really, really struggling here. I uh, haven't seen a lot of the race guys Dodgers up here. Uh, Caden Bishop, a big, a big name that I haven't seen whatsoever. Fireball Motorsports has been virtually non-existent. Um uh, but you see, you see a lot of rookies up here. You see names like Tyler King and James Omaki, um, and uh, even C Packet up here battling for the lead. Not not your typical superstars of the series, but they're they're proven to make a name for themselves here today. Well, superstars of the sport, if you count them as proclaimed, self-proclaimed superstars. Anyways, um, <laughs> Roberta Crown Jr. goes to the inside of C Packet. As it's three wide for the lead. Alan Mooch on the bottom. James Omaki in the middle. Oh. James Omaki will send it through, but Alan Mooch gets the lead going on to the back stretch. It's side by side for the lead here. Uh, kudos to uh, Tyler King for checking up there. He most certainly would have caused a massive wreck regardless, or at least yeah. been a part of it. Uh, really dangerous going three, four wide at a track like this. Yeah, props to all three of them. They could have just like kept it on the throttle, but uh, they didn't. They just realized, oh wait, we're actually all gonna crash. So they respectfully backed out, gave him room, and uh, yeah, great. Look at the recovery from King, though. Here he comes. And here comes <laughs> Leon Five too. Um, even though he's a lap down, he's trying to get himself unlapped, and he's showing some serious speed here. Well, I can definitely say Leland Fife has some skill within dirt. He actually almost came from a career-ending injury in the Amsoil late, or, uh, Dirt Late Model Series um, to actually get a good few runs going into uh, some of his races. Almost won a few races uh, alongside okay. with his teammate Ethan Farley. But here's side-by-side -side battling with James Omaki for second. Side-by-side -side battling for the lead with Leland Fife uh, onto the bottom. He'll get the lead, but here comes James Omaki. In yeah, most cases, um, lap traffic would be an issue there, but at, at that time, it seems oh, James just pushed the 19. There's a problem through. with the 28. He just fell way off the pace. Big like, check. Yeah, big check. Up yeah, I don't know there. what's going on. Oh, yeah, that 28 has a problem. That 28 has a problem. Bit more of the checkup, it looks like. I hope it's not too big for him. He's just having yeah, I up. think that might be an. Oh, yeah, that's more. Yeah, that's an engine issue. He's losing so much pace. Look at all, he's being swallowed up oh, let's alive. Let's hope he can get to the inside before a massive wreck ensues. This 96 it's is being held. Oh, oh, there no, they go. No. There they go. Oh, oh. My God, Jared Holmes, J.D. Bregler, Caden Bishop. Oh. Still getting around. Oh, my God. Oh. Sydney bad Allen. For Sydney. Tyler Scott keeps getting hit in the back there. I saw that coming from a mile away. I saw that uh. coming. And there's oh, Seth that's Peters, that's Peters that's day co finally coming to an end. There's Don Tavius Young there. Ah, uh, that's going to hurt. And Taddy, ouch, that's going to hurt. Good lord. Bunch of good race car drivers just sadly getting involved in a wreck that could have easily been prevented. It looked like it was a mechanical failure coming from King. It just, he couldn't get to the inside long oh, enough Brian to get Leon. Leon. Oh, Brian Oh, no. What a sh- Oh, O'Connor, I think, with some damage, too. Another tough break for him. Uh... It was Demo Redneck coming down pit road. Rough day for just almost everybody that has a big name. Bregler. Defending champion, J.D. Bregler, just destroyed. Oh, wait, I how think did Bregler get that damage? I thought he made it through fine. Um, I guess I'm going to have to check the replay again. Yeah, there's a lot that happened there. We, I, I'm sure we didn't catch all of it um, in the moment, but a lot of fast race cars have been taken out of this one. Uh, just a, yeah. <laughs> just a tough day for everybody here. It's a brand new sort of race yeah, surface for a of, lot of these guys. 
Again, uh, I'm just, sorry for interrupting you, Emma, it, but the Tower King's rolling out of a stall, so... I think the car's okay, but there was something. But anyways, let's take a look and see what happened. Oh, it just looked like... Oh, my God. It so, seemed like it he keeps getting hit. Uh, Every time ooh. I looked back, he was getting hit. Oh, yeah, there was... Uh, oh, that 11 car was oh, spinning was like Peter's, a little... Oh, oh, Seth Peter's just coming in. Full... Oh, oh, oh man. My God. Oh, Seth. Oh, Seth. Oh, Seth. That had to be more right of a into line. Sydney Allen, who was already destroyed. That had to be his drive line. So what I happened don't think was he'd be able to do that. Uh, so what happened was oh. that either the twenty-seven got into the five, or the five came down into the twenty-seven. One of the two. I'm gonna have to see another angle because this is clearly not gonna work. Well, I think from what I saw there, he hit into the 11, which caused some of the issues, and then just kind of got um, involved here. here. We're on board with Tanner Campos here, who has some of the better visibility going on here, and it's... And, oh, he right on the barely Ooh, scraped but avoid it. it. But avoid it. Atta boy. Just a... Yeah, it's a good kiss. I... Oh, and there was even another crash. Oh, that's what caught Leon. Good and that's Lord. what caught O'Connor, too. Okay, here, here will be probably a better yeah. shot at it. Uh, okay, Leon got out of there just with a little bit of scrapage. He could have kept going, but what happened? Oh, he oh, just went he down into the 88. My yeah, God. Oh, Connor had no oh Jaeger was in it as well. Uh, no, uh, that's Falconer. Uh, Jaeger's oh, yes, that, that is correct. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me there. Yeah, that was Another Falconer tough in the 29 car this week. And another tough break for um, Ethan O'Connor again. Yeah, my goodness. Certainly hasn't had the most fun time in that 88 car, but... uh. Uh, to be fair, it's better than what he had in the 59, so here's another replay. This will be a real good shot. Yeah, right? Leon yeah, just, just came down. He blatantly went down. That's what ruined JD. Yeah, Ethan O'Connor is um not at fault there. Um, He had no warning at all. No warning. I have no idea what was going through Brian Leon's head there, but he just blatantly went down and wrecked Ethan O'Connor. Yeah, entire, that 88 like, is well. pissed, and I don't blame him. Well, right now we're back, and appears here's the bubble battle right here. It seems it has shortened quite a bit, and uh, <laughs> Gene Carly Arenda in that 04 car, he's starting to get up there. He's right near the bubble uh, to get around the 21 of Roberta Crown Jr., who is only eight points ahead of that 04 car. It seems like the 48 still on top with 62 points ahead, and Caden Bishop right there is 30 uh, on top of the... Uh, cut line he i can say leland fife is going to be a a little bit of an issue here is here he well it says Green right flag. now on the ticker the fit it's the 53 but yeah i was going to point that out the 1953 of 53. i believe alex Muriel. yeah but um he has sadly passed away because of uh, reasons yeah caden sanders god rest his soul yeah yeah team continues on though Meanwhile, Zach Stern goes to the inside, gets around Nate Wines. He now has plenty of field to go across, but Seapacker right now also trying to keep it. What oh. in the world? Oh, oh that, was over. that was Justin Newman. No, I thought that was Colin. Oh, wait, that's Tyra King. Uh, yeah, there's an engine issue on that. Oh, it appears caution oh, yeah, is out. Caution. I don't know. What? what in the world? There's Colin over in the stall. I saw a yellow car going slow. So... Is that why we're under caution? What? I would world? assume so. Okay, I need to see a replay. This is confusing. I saw Justin Newman down there. It, it was also it was all quick. Yeah, so yeah. Cats. So what? Try to find the twenty seven if you can. Right there, the Liberty Mutual car. So going into turn one, I oh, same thing with the twenty eight. He just. He has a problem. The engine just died. Either the engine so, died or he got sent up the wall. I'm also yeah, uh, getting word from Race Control issue. that the uh, there is an error with the leaderboard. So the 19 is our race leader. He's listed as the 53. The mix-up was with the, um, you know, the transfer of certain owners' points and stuff. So something along those lines. So Leland Five is in fact our leader. It's just the 
car number 19 is listed as the 53. On board with found over. Man, it's been a tough day for Liberty Liberty. Um, first, uh, Tower King had issues, uh, which um, was the um, catalyst for that big crash. And now um, Colin Dover has engine issues of its own as well. So, yeah, uh, Liberty Liberty would want to forget this day in a hurry. Yeah, oh, you could right. just hear that engine just get quieter and quieter and quieter until he just simply says, yeah, I got to stop the car. It, this is Certainly. too much. Yeah, the engine just, yeah, see there, they the like engine just died. Yeah, car yeah. comes to a complete stop. They had to throw the yellow. He oh. wasn't going to make it. Imagine if a car spun around there. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and there he had already got. I lift my heart, a spring lifts up, a yellow daisy to the rain. My heart will be a lovely cup, although it holds but pain. For I shall learn from flower and leaf that color every drop they hold. And we are back from commercial break here with lap 69 under our belts. The bubble battle still right now. It's now with the 04, three points behind Roberto Crown Jr. Uh, he will have to keep up his consistency if he wants to get around Roberto Crown Jr. in the bubble. Um, right now, it looks like Leland Fife still trying to keep ahead with James Omaki uh, right there. Alan Mooch in third, the eight of uh patrick roden patrick roden thank you and yes. c packet and round out the top five the pace car rolls into pit road as leland fife now finally rolls in we will get ready to go green and james omaki will uh try and chase him down and alan mooch with a poor restart there yeah, Omaki actually got a good one on like Mooch, and uh, I think um, a gap is about to open for him here right about now. Or never mind, uh, he just couldn't get there in time. But here comes Patrick Roden on the move, so with a uh, C packet and the uh, Roberto Crown. Yeah, here he comes in that very nice uh, Dale Earnhardt Senior throwback. I uh, didn't realize that was a scheme he was going to be running this weekend, but I'm a big fan of that. Um, Roberto trying to make up as many positions as he can, so he can make sure he stays in that top ten by the end of tonight's race. Um, you know, I'm right. Um, just imagine under caution, considering uh, what Patrick Roden's driving. Um, he decides to like undo the window net and just clean the windshield by himself. I I know it, it, you you can't do that, but I'd yeah, love bit, to see bit it. Bit different standards nowadays, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you never know. Maybe when the day is over, but I don't imagine that happening mid race, especially in a place like this where Roden finally, for the first time, really since his victory at Colorado, having a really good run. Um, all of a sudden, as I uh, move Zach Stern, the 83, up the racetrack. Well, I can definitely say that. I doubt they're going to actually do that outside of photo shoots because, well, with most of these brand new race cars here, um, they have window tears. So after every pit stop, they'll just tear off the window and they'll be able to get a new film on there without any issues as Patrick Roden goes to the inside of Roberta Crown Jr. As yes. there's a fight for second with C Packet. As Justin Newman goes to the inside of Zach Stern. Now C Packet in second. He wants to try and get the lead off of Leland Fife. 
Yeah, Justin Newman, another driver we haven't heard from too much today. Yet another yellow and blue car up here, along with the 8 of Roden. Uh, not sure really what speed he has in that Ford Mustang, but uh, at the very least a good start for him up here um, in the top 10. I mean, uh, his um, hero, Ryan Newman, um, was an acclaimed dirt track racer, and um, he's uh, living up to that name. as uh, He's about to knock on the door for P5 here. And knock on the door he will. It will not be too bad, though. I'm surprised that he was able to uh, get towards the top five with the uh, immense amount of talent, but I doubt he's going to get up even further than that with Patrick Roden, James Omaki, C-Pack, and Leland Fife. C-Pack and Leland Fife, both of those guys are really, really good and really, really on fire here. Both dodges, actually. So I don't know if that dodge front end is going to allow a lot more air to flow through the engines. or. And here comes Packet. Oh, sorry about that, uh, Freeman. Uh, but here comes Packet toward the inside of five. Five just leaves him enough space. But here we go. Back into turn one. There's lap traffic coming up ahead. Who gets ahead in the corner? 37 got the lead. Pack it back to the front. And they're coming up on the 77 here. Uh, Demo Redneck, a teammate to that 19 car. Um, I would say Dodge is in really good hands, but these are two drivers that are likely not going to oh. be with the manufacturer. Oh. Oh. And what look at what Redneck does. One. Blowing up that 37. Big contact. I guess the 37 did not appreciate that. So he just gave him a little bit of a receipt there, just saying, hey, watch it next time. As Patrick Roden now goes to the outside, oh, and, it, oh, and caution oh. is out to signal the end of the stage here as Leland Fife wins stage two. Did we really get caught that off guard? <laughs> yes. Victory here at uh, Richmond. Very good start for this. Uh, uh, Grant tonight. He couldn't get all of them qualified. Lindsey Dietz was not able to make the field, but this 19 is having a very good and that's a new showing team. so that's far. Like, that's, this is like their first start, if I can recall, and Leland Fife is putting on a great debut showing for them. Well, I can definitely say uh, he has some ADLMS history, so I doubt uh, he has gotten any sort of dirt rust on him, so safe to say that both and Fife and C Packet are going to be the ones to uh, look out for.
and we are back from commercial break. Leland Fife, still your leader. C Packet in second with Patrick Roden in third. James Omaki fourth. And in fifth place is Justin Newman. Here's the bubble battle. And Brandon Allen surprisingly up in the cut line. He is uh, six points ahead of Gene Carly Arenda. That's a uh, big time shakeup there. And I also noticed the 89 of Evan Toddy. Throw him into the conversation in this battle. He's only 14 back. Uh, this could be really, really big going forward as these drivers are only separated by uh, about 14 points. So uh, and if you're, uh, pretty big at the cutoff there, especially for drivers without victories. That mainly being Roberto Crown Jr. as we come back to green. And if you're a JD fan, my condolences. Yeah. <laughs> big. If you're a big JD guy, um, I, it's, it's over, buddy. It's, it's over. Unless he finds a way to win next race. Um, no. But here comes Patrick Roden going... Almost tried to make it three wide. See, Packard shuts the door in his face. Leland Fife nowhere to go. He's stuck on the high side as Leland Fife loses first place. See, Packard oh, gonna go for it. Here comes Patrick Roden to send it in. He's going side by side and good exit speed coming off a of CPAC in the number 37 entry. CPAC, it's really, really been putting everybody on notice today. He finished, after finishing ninth on Darwin's on debut, he, which seems impressive enough, he's not only put this car on pole because of like how the heats work, but he's been in contention all day long. Really impressive. And here comes Patrick uh, Roden underneath uh, Packet here. Um, turn one, who stays ahead because Packet has been, made, have been able to make that middle line work. Roden sends it in. And down the back stretch, I think he might be able to get him. And the fans are starting to get on their feet. This is their hometown kid, Patrick Roden. And he is and he taking got the race lead here at Richmond. Sponsored by CSX. He is going train speeds here, but he has to keep that mirror handy on him because even though it, the dirt is getting kicked up and all of that, he can still clearly see C Packet right there in front of him. So unless he is not careful, we may expect a very, very aggressive pass by uh, our good friend C Packet here. Here is the bubble. Right now, Gene Carly Arenda has shortened the gap a little, little bit, only points. Uh, right now, Brandon Allen is six points ahead of Gene Carly Arenda. Uh, if Gene Carl can keep his uh, race car clean and be able to get more passes, he may be able to get past that bubble as C Packet takes that lead and makes it look easy. Most certainly does, and his speed has just been impressive. This whole Brink team, it's not like the 37's been typically the fastest car in the field, but C Packet has made this thing look like a championship contending race car. Most certainly exciting for this team next throw season in, if he ends up remaining. Rat, throw in the fact that 37 pre previously struggled with um, Nick Nelson before they booted him out of that car for more um, prospects. Um, C Packet is really um, making it show that it was a driver problem, not the car. That might just be the case. He's definitely proven them, uh, proven a lot of people wrong, proving other people right uh, here tonight. And I mean, what really, I don't think there's any better racetrack to prove what you're capable of uh, than a track like this, putting down dirt on Richmond. Well, um, that's the power of Kmart for you. Uh, anyway, speaking, speaking of C Packet, um, he's about to get passed by Patrick Roden again. It was a very interesting battle for the lead here. Patrick Roden wants to try and make sure that his Colorado win isn't his only win. But C Packer wants to try and get his first career win in this series. He's trying to find his line. He's been aggressive but also fast all day. So I would not put it behind him. If he can get a good run into entrance, there he is. He finds a very narrow corner, slides Patrick Roden up the track, side by side. But Patrick Roden still keeps the lead. Really smooth move there as he's about to set it up back at the inside of one and... No, oh, just not cleared. But he, I'm sure he'll clear him out of three and four. Really good one and two from the eight there, but this time inside is just way too strong and turns three and four and CPAC easily gets by. Now Roden's got to worry about this 18 and this 19 who have shown immense speed here tonight. Probably and here comes so turn up Roden. the inside of... Oh, oh no! Oh, big they just, contact oh. odd! Wow. wow, I thought that was going to end way differently. Zach Stern, man. 
And here's Those the. Uh, I haven't seen much lately. Caleb Marinelli making his way into the top ten. Uh oh, uh oh, we are going to have a lap problem, here, folks. Two oh, wide lap cars. Demo Redneck. Demo it's one Redneck thing to have one lap car, but two. JDF and Bregler. It looks like it's going to be to Roden's advantage, though. But it's Art. not going to be for long. Here comes C Packet going into the inside. So do not count out that number 37 entry, even though the lap cars have sort of slowed it down. The person that did slow him down, though, big time was Alan Mooch there. Now, Mooch is actually um, keeping back up there. He's just got to get around the five, and uh, he'll be right around fifth. Yeah, fifth. It's just that Justin Newman's been heavily affected there. And meanwhile, and there's some Patrick other guys Redden. like uh, Kaylo Marinelli. He's finally entered the top ten all day. I think this is like the first time he's been up here all day. And for Patrick Roden, a second victory would be absolutely monumental. That would lock him in, basically. One of the worries has been his points position. If we get any more winners, it could knock him out with our wild card playoff format. So this victory would be key in making sure that he'll be contending for a championship. He can turn his season around. He's got to make sure he can hold off this 37 car, though, for the next 17 laps. Yeah, oh, and another thing I'd like to point out before we get back on these two, um, Tyra King, who had those engine um, hiccups earlier, well, he's back up into the top 10 now. As I'm here, C Packet trying to get the lead back. Well, right now, C Packet's still trying to find his spot here. He's seen lines that even a lot of the uh, well-known drivers didn't even see. Here comes Justin Newman getting around Kayla Marinelli in that number 15 Pepsi car. He wants to uh, get a good points day going into this in that Mountain Dew car. But in, especially that number six, look at those colors. I'll say this. Look at those colors. Those colors are the colors of the Ukraine flag. Um, Mountain Dew has been a part of the UK Relief Fund. Uh, that Ukraine Relief Fund who, uh, if he gets a good finish and or if someone pays for those specialty bottles of Mountain Dew... Um, about the about one hundred fifty dollars maybe will uh, of that earning will go to the Ukraine relief fund, uh, and each time that you donate money to get those specialty bottles, they will also go to that Ukraine relief fund for uh, most of the people in Ukraine that are affected by this incident that is going down from Russia. Meanwhile, K the Kmart specialty of. Uh, C Paga here, he gets the run, goes into it, he'll take the lead from Patrick Roden, who is now starting to get an effect of a lap car. Yeah, and yeah Tree Schlasser Jr. in that 44 car, these lap car or these uh lead lap cars will now have to maneuver their way by. Yeah, and there's C Packet really putting that Kmart magic to use there. Um he tried to use that 44 tree as a pick, but it just um Patrick just got out of his way just in time. And according to C Packet, again, whenever I was talking to him, um, he asked me specifically if I wanted a blue light special. I didn't know what it was, so I denied it. Apparently, it was actually just a specialty deal at uh, the Kmart uh, tent there in uh, Darlington. If you go and pay for a blue slushy, that is their blue light special. But right now, they're getting ready to go. Ten laps to go here. Uh, C Packet wants to try and get his first career win. Patrick Roden wants to lock himself in. So these guys have something to fight for. And looking yeah, at the C drivers Packet, in this top three and four, looking at these intervals between the drivers, get ready for a fun finish. We're going to have a fun winner as well. Yeah, C Packet, um, even though he has nothing to lose here, well, meanwhile, Patrick, he's got everything to lose. It's really an interesting perspective between the top two and what they have to lose and what they don't. Right now, to oh. the inside bumper, using the bumper of C Packet, he'll try and get around him going into three and four. The straightaway speed is good, but the corner speed almost just as good, but still C Packet right in that spot as we are getting uh, about like eight laps to go. Yeah, considering what we've uh, seen so far today, I am almost certain that uh, that 37 is getting back or back around that eight car. And um, there's here comes the start of that. Um, um, CPAC is actually going to use a redneck as a pick to him. Smart thinking there. Works absolutely to his advantage, at least for the moment. With all this battling and that lap traffic, 
You got to watch out for this 19 car, Leland Fife. A lot of speed, a lot to prove here at Richmond. Can he catch up? But it looks like this 37 is gonna is gonna gap everybody else. And watch out for Alan Mooch there too. He um, wants to spoil the party there too. Well, with only six laps to go this time, Patrick Roden one has to put everything in that car to catch up to that number 37 Kmart entry. As you can see, JDF and Bregler now once again lap traffic. J as you can see as well, Alan Mooch going to the inside of Leland Fife. Patrick Roden trying to find his spot trying to find that eventually got him around as you can also see brandon allen still on top of the cut line here on the bubble battle uh still six points ahead of gene carly arenda in that 04 machine but i wouldn't put it behind brandon allen if he just skates on by on top of the cut line and really the most of these drivers on the cutoff they do have a victory they don't have much to worry about the one that has something to worry about is roberto he's got to get his way into the top 10 so that he can get his spot, take it from one of these winners who can take wild card positions. Otherwise, JD, he's not really going to have much to get in. JD was really, really not messing ball. around him there, but um, yeah, Packet gets through him easily, but that allows him the eight card to close the gap. It allowed him to cl close it quite a bit. I think he's going to be right there. We're coming to two laps to go, Emmett Freeman. Well, I can definitely say this, rat bastard. Uh, popsicle sticks are definitely in the air. People are waving their rally towels. Patrick Roden has everything to lose. C Packet has everything to gain. He will try and get around it. Is C Packet in that number 37 car? He will go around three and four. White flag for C Packet. Patrick Roden looking for his line, looking for a chance to win this to the inside. It will not work. C Packet closes the door down the straightaway. C Packet has dive it in. C Packet checks it out. Patrick Gordon has got zero it. He's got it. Number 37, Kmar will win. Here a boy. What a, what a underdog story. That is Cinderella's story right there. That glass slipper fitted perfectly. Wow. What a that two in a row for Bishop Racing Incorporated. They Much are on needed. the upturn. Yeah. And they have this, this young rookie here who might yep. just be the future of this organization, going along with all the superstars that are going to be on that team next season. Come on, C Packet. Burn it down. They love you. Come on, do what it. What a hot Packet is getting ready for the oh, win of a lifetime. Oh, and he, in the wall. I don't blame him. It's his first burnout, and it's a dirt track, so burnouts aren't really common there. But he's burning it down in front of the fans. What a finish, especially for uh, <laughs> the hot shot rookie. C packet there in that number 37 entry. What a win. And I'll say this, I'm sure the team owner, Caden Bishop, is very proud of that driver. Can we keep I mean, Richmond how, on the dirt, please? I, I agree with you, Steve Richardson. Yeah, I, I we, really do. This yeah, is a this place is, that's this gonna is, be a staple of the yeah. schedule moving forward. This is a driver who might be the staple of the series moving forward. Yeah. What a performance. Yeah. That kid has shown he can wheel it, and it's only been two races. And back to my point of um stating that we should keep this track on the dirt. If we were on the pavement, I would have fell asleep by, like, lap 50. This was a great race. Yeah, I think Definitely. all the fans had to have enjoyed what they saw. Uh, probably some sick Roden fans uh, for not being able to see him quite get it done, but still a fantastic performance all around. What a day. What a day, Emmett Freeman. Well, what a day indeed. I'm not going to put it too far behind you. Uh, well, I can definitely say C Packet has a bright future ahead of him with uh, Bishop Racing Incorporated. These guys are wanting to try and get it done, and so far they have gotten almost the A-list celebrities of racing here for their uh, race team going on. And I, I'll definitely say there was a lot of uh, surprise and what a win congratulations to c packet in that number 37 entry replacing a driver and showing that it was not the car's fault it was more the driver issue so definitely have to say um very proud of this guy and very very proud of what he has accomplished i'll have yeah. to say rat bastard what do you think of this going uh forward what do you think c packet has to offer for brink uh, I think I think this he offers a lot, but uh, yeah. Th 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 thank you all for for joining in. This is this is a kid with a bright future.